So I'm here today with Tanya Kennedy Luminati, who's director of Matrix Max. Tanya, we hear the term SSO all the time when we're working on website mm -hmm. projects. What does SSO mean? SSO is an abbreviation for single sign-on. And probably the easiest way to explain it is with a diagram. So let me start. So the concept is that you've got multiple systems serving your organization. So let's say that you have a main database. That's probably your AMS. Association management software. Your association management system, exactly. And then you've got other systems as well. Almost everyone's going to have some type of content system, a CMS. That's holding your press releases, your news, your white papers, your data. That's powering your website. Mm-hmm. Then there's a lot of other systems that come into play too. A lot of people have some kind of, for example, a GR system. Tracking Congress, tracking legislation, They might have a jobs database. Mm-hmm. Might have a jobs, that's a great one. Let's say that we've also got a jobs database. These are probably different vendors. They could be the same, probably different. They may be on different servers. They may be serving off different domains. So the concept of single sign-on is that your user can go to any one of these systems, log in, and automatically be logged into the others. So let me walk that using one of these systems. So let's say a user comes to your job area and they hit a restricted page. The jobs database is going to call to whoever's your master, usually your main database, and it's going to say, hey, can this person log in? The master is going to respond with a special access token that will get them in. Now, once they've done that, if you're using true single sign-on, then if the user, say, jumps from the jobs database, over to a page in GR. That's restricted. That's restricted, exactly, that's restricted. The GR database will call back to the AMS, realize the user's already authenticated, and then let that person in. And the user will never even know it. They may not even know they've gone to a restricted page because it will be seamless to them. So and they, they never get prompted to log in again, and they don't have to enter their credentials over again. Yes, exactly. So how is that different from single password? That's a really good question because a lot of people throw out these terms and don't really kind of understand the difference because it's very nuanced. In single password, it's not this full integrated experience. So to do the same flow at that point, we go back, our jobs person uh, authenticated, they're logged in. If I go, if I'm using a single password scenario, or maybe each database is doing it differently, when I jump from jobs over to GR, I'm going to have to log in again. I'm going to have to fill in my username and password again. Now, it could be the same one. You could be in an instance where the GR database said, well, I don't want to, I don't want to observe that shared token, but I want to get maybe a nightly feed of user data from the database. So then they have to log in again, and then they would come in. They can use the same password to get into all these restricted pages, but they have to do it every time they hit a different system. Exactly. Okay. So if your password is ABC123, which I hope it's not, but if it is, then you could be in a scenario where you could type ABC123 here and here and here, but you'd have to do it three times or four times if you're also dealing with AMS pages. Tanya, I imagine that SSO is desirable. Yeah, it is very desirable. It's from the user experience, Users don't like logging in. They want to log in once, and once is really too much, quite frankly, for a lot of people. So the easier we can make it for the user, the better. Tanya, thanks so much. You're welcome. Thanks for watching the Matrix Minute. Don't forget to connect with us on our blog and social media. For more information, go to matrixgroup.net.